Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Supply Chain Geek. Um, thanks for all the subscribers that I've been getting the past couple of days. Thank you for that and I hope I'm doing some really good content that you're enjoying. Um, some value additions and also some you know good um, insights into what's happening in the supply chain. Um, so today I stumbled upon this um, uh, article on the Ford's latest supply chain issue. Um, Ford has been lining up a lot of vehicles on their manufacturing plants where they can't send it out into the market because of a very, very um, small but um, very impactful component that they need. Um, so before I get into that, um, I would appreciate it if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe if you're new here and then also hit the bell notification button so that you also get updated on new content about supply chain. So if you're interested in supply chain management, if you are studying supply chain management, if you are in the profession of supply chain management, and if you like to be updated about supply chain management, um, yeah, this is the place for you. Um, I also do some um, you know, uh, updates about what's happening in Amazon, what's happening in the e-commerce world, stuff like that so that you know there's always value um, in this um, channel so please do subscribe and hit the notification button so that you get updated on everything that's new on supply chain cool um, let's get into it so Ford's latest supply chain issue is not chips um, so there was a shortage of um, chips and there is a bit of a tension between China and the US regarding um, the chip supply because as you might know um, after the COVID situation and with all this going on, the war, not the war, maybe it's more of an economic war between US and China. There's a bit of tension when, it's, when it comes to business. So there's a bit of an issue when it comes to chips. Um, so a lot of people thought that that would become an issue for Ford. And that was the issue for a lot of these manufactured vehicles being in the manufacturing and not moving out from them. But that's not the case. It has been the blue oval badger. So that's a small critical component, I would say. Um, as you know, um, all vehicles are, are, I mean, identified by the brand logo. So this logo is currently um, out of stock. So why such a small component? This just one. This just this component is holding back hundreds of manufactured vehicles um, that is not gone into the market because just because um, someone maybe some production guy or some planner would have messed up the supply of these Ford badges. So things like this happen. Um, so Ford is obviously a huge company. So if it does happen for huge companies like this, you can imagine smaller companies also do have problems when it comes to components. They run out of components sometimes um, the supply of those components becomes um, very difficult to get uh, the demand for those components may be high so it's very difficult to get them um, so a lot of a lot of us um, business owners um, people who are working in supply chain people who are in procurement purchasing and all those functions do find scenarios like this where you know one particular component holds the whole entire supply chain so that's what's happened to Ford right now so um, I'll talk about um, how you know you could have avoided this. Um, uh, some uh, eight steps or eight key points that I like to point out that would help um, avoid this. Uh, but before that, let's just go through this article because it's very interesting. Uh, Ford, a big company like Ford, having forty-five thousand vehicles uh, stuck, um, not going through the supply chain, it's stuck, and that's that's a cost. Um, mostly trucks and SUVs, as you can see here in the Kentucky Speedway. Uh, so they have put it on a parking lot on the Kentucky Speedway. Um, obviously, a lot of people thought it was the semiconductors, but no, it's on the chips. It is the badges. Um, it's a lack of blue oval Ford badges. It's something small like that, you know, making a big uh, impact on the supply chain. So as you might know, uh, if you're in the world of supply chain or if you are an entrepreneur um, who's manufacturing products somewhere else and selling it in a different market, components are very key into um, identifying your um, inventory basically. Um, if you are inventory planning, uh, very important to know what your main components are, which is your critical components. There's an ABC strategy of identifying your components. I'll talk about that later, but just, just know, or maybe just Google ABC 
um, in supply chain um, and you would know that you can categorize your components and you can give more preference more focus towards those A products, B products, and then maybe less more concentration on C products. Whereas those are not highly critical and not business dependent product um, components. So yeah, have a look at that if you can. I'll do about that video later on during this week. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that as well. So yeah, all the more reasons to subscribe. Um, so what they are trying to do, so Ford's ex executives have considered some workarounds such as 3D printing, yep, the insignia until the permanent ones could be obtained, yep, so these are, um, so uh, these are like backup plans that they can do to actually help uh, sort out this supply issue, but they didn't feel the printed substitutions would meet the bar on quality, these people said, so yeah, like you know, like, like this, like I said, Ford is a brand. If you don't give uh, the proper uh, ideal component for those vehicles, um, the quality of that whole vehicle goes down because for the Ford badge is uh, the Ford badge gives away to the final product, which is the vehicle. Um, so yeah, so um, so this is the problem. Um, few things I like to discuss about you know um, you know. Um, so these they are finding work around this, uh, but yeah, it's good to know. Like it's 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 ma it's a major thing to know um, to say Ford, being a, such a big company, has supply chain issues for something as little as the blue oil batch, but it's very critical for the end product. Um, so I'll talk about um, some eight um, eight ways or eight steps or eight methods that you can help uh, avoid. Uh, supply chain issues in terms of um, not having the proper components on time. Yep. So let's start this up. Yep. Eight solutions to shortage problems. Cool. So when you deal with scarcity, it's not an easy task. Obviously, a lot of um, issues come up. Uh, while there is no quick fix for such a significant problem. There are numerous ways to manufacturers can avoid it. Um, there are ways to avoid it. There are methodologies. There are theories that you can apply to your business where you can um, proactively um, um, mitigate these problems and make sure that this doesn't happen like what happened to Ford. Um, so here are a few strategies for preventing and mitigating the most disruptive out of stock situations. Number one, speed up the parts. Expediting is typically used for large projects where delay in delivery should be detected. Deter, uh, detrimental to the manufacturing process and the company itself. This is a standard way for businesses to deal with shortages today. So um, a lot of people do this, um, which is not the most cost effective way, but um, expediting um, the parts. Um, so, based, based on, so basically what it means is if it used to take 30 days to manufacture this product, you know, you will spend a bit more money until the manufacturer put in more manpower or man, more resources into getting those produce productions done within 15 days or short early times. Um, if you used to ship those parts through sea shipments, um, you will consider air shipping it because sea shipment takes about 45 days maybe from say like countries from China to US. Uh, but then if you are critical for this, you speed up the parts, you instead of using sea shipment, you will use the air freight and you would um, spend more money. So it's about four times the price. So I think she shipment for a kilo is about at this time in um, Q4, it's about um, three to four dollars per kilo. Um, but if you are air freighting, it's about nine dollars to ten, eleven dollars per kilo. Um, so yeah, so it's a costly way of doing this, but you can mitigate uh, the loss of stock. Number two, enhanced forecasting. Yes. Um, Manufacturers use sales inventory and operation planning uh, processes to determine what's potential future demand they will face in order to more accurately forecast demand. I'm pretty sure um, Ford, being such a company, does do enhanced forecasting, forecasting, improving their forecast. Um, I think um, there would have been something that went wrong in their forecasting, they would have missed something. Um, uh, ideally, I would say that you know they wouldn't have paid um, more focus on the patch component. They would have thought that they had enough in stock and wouldn't have ordered it, or maybe they just forgot to order it. Uh, so things like that do happen. Um, you'll be surprised how, how often it happens. Um, 
so yeah it's a matter of you know having an improved forecast and see where you went wrong in your forecast when things like this happen and then look for solutions to make it better um, and make sure that it doesn't happen again um, I throw these slides in uh, for you under the um, description so that you can use it um, for you know uh, for your help I guess um, yeah three uh, improve lead time and uh, time accuracy our first step towards reducing lead time is understanding how to calculate it. The formula is lead time equals to supply delay plus reordering delay. So, um, so you need to identify what your lead time is for the product. Um, your improving your lead time accuracy helps understand when you need to place your orders and make sure that you don't run out of stock um, and you place the orders on the right time. So for example, um, say your lead time would be, for example, supply delay would be like, um, um, say for example, when you are placing an order, it takes about 15 days for someone to supply. And then, um, for example, reordering delays would be, how long does it take for you to reorder? Um, processors, approvals, and stuff like that um, will come into reordering delay. Um, so you need to calculate those and identify what your lead times are. So you need to improve those, you know, the lead time between customer purchasing something and the supplier filling that order is referred to as supply delay. Whereas reordering delay is the time between an order being fulfilled and the repurchase of that order. So once the lead time has been calculated, there, is two, there are two ways to improve the precision of your lead time accuracy. Um, for further um, talking about improved lead time and accuracy, first and foremost, communicate with and stay in touch with the supplier. You always, always need to be in touch with your supplier, especially if you are part of the supply chain team of Ford. In this case, you need to be in direct communication with the supplier because your supplier is an extended partner of your business. And you know, not only will the buyer be able to ensure that the supply is on track, you need to keep keep on track with them, communicate with them, and identify you know keep checking with them how far is the production is going to be over because i've worked with a lot of suppliers in china um a lot of them do say that they give it within three to four weeks but then it ends up to another week because of some kind of delay that does happen you can or you, you should always 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 be prepared for those kind of delays because whenever i'm forecasting i'm always looking at five weeks i don't look at four weeks as the supplier tells me because i need a buffer to identify so i'm pre-planned i'm proactive regarding the ordering so um yeah always always i'm um, you know, be in communication with the supplier or i understand how far he's he with the production and see what it's going what's going on so that if you do see any um, uh, hiccups within the supply chain of getting your products then you can be proactive and sort do something to sort it out rather than just waiting and then the supplier after five six days delay comes and tells you hey we have a uh, problem like this um, continued all of these calculations are crucial determining so there's so many calculations online um, to calculate the accurate lead times um, so go through them and have a look and implement them into your systems as well Get rid of single point failures. When a company relies on a single supplier for a material product, if something goes wrong with that supply, the company is out of luck. Factories will be clogged with shortages. Brick and mortar stores will be out of stock. Online retailers will be back ordered. Um, I can't stress enough uh, when it comes to you know having a single supplier for your materials. Um, I think as that article about Ford, uh, they did see that they are going to approach um, badge manufacturers of Toyota and another company which does badges for vehicles so they want to see if they can get it done for them in the meantime um, but yeah um, ideally you do you don't want to go into the scenario where you're going to start renegotiating with new suppliers having another supplier having a single supply is good instead of because you can do um, economics of scales because you can give one order a bulk order and get some economies of scales save some costs but always, always pre-evaluate and keep a standby supplier so that when you do fall in problem with a supplier, when he doesn't have the materials or the capacity to do the production that you want within your given time frame, you can always, always go back to your second supplier and get it done. Or if your lead time, um, say you, it takes about 30 days to, uh, for the supplier, single supplier to manufacture the products. 
and you want it within 15 days then you can split the order and give it to both suppliers and get the products within 15 days so 15 days there 15 days here give half of the of the production and get it done um brick and mortar stores will go out of stock uh, in this situation people won't be able to sell online retailers will be back ordered which is not great for it's a sale but another day um i would say it's I've, I've faced this before, it's not great, um, the quality of your um, custom experience wouldn't be great because it'll take a lot of days for the stock to go to the um, customer and the customer always wants their products as fast as they can. So um, back order is not good at all. Um, form a shortage attack team, have a small team in a big team, uh, a big company. Um, like Ford, I would expect them to have um, a shortage attack team um, to manage shortage to manage shortages um, in their processes so that they will be more focused and um, you know they can navigate and you know um, quickly and efficiently sort out those problems in a quick um, session where you know a small team gets together they only focus on that particular topic so for in, in terms of Ford it would be their badges so then then basically it would mean that you know they would get together and discuss only about how to solve this problem and within the day they come up with a very fast solution and um, quickly and efficiently so that um, the best best uh, method of sorting this out would come out from that team develop supply collaboration always always um, when you have problems like this when you have problems with your supply always collaborate with your supplier your supplier might have better ways of doing it they might know other suppliers who can help um, split the order, um, um, help you out by you know making those productions fast. Um, it can benefit both parties. You know, collaborating with your supplier is very important. Tell them what your issue is. They would help you find a solution as well. Maybe if they feel like you know they could find more people to get it done, more manpower, more resources, they'll be able to put it in um, and. Sometimes I've seen, um, I've had a situation when I needed stock very fast for an, for an unexpected demand for a particular product that I am for a company that I'm working for. I did collaborate with the supplier and they did also um, reach out to another supplier um, and ask them, you know, hey, do you want to join us and try to finish this order for this particular client? And they were happy to do it. And yeah, it was pretty much great. And uh, like, for example, when we do big orders, they always collaborate now with that other supplier as well which is great. Um, I didn't have to worry about it. So now my production times are faster um, and more efficient. Maintain exact inventory data. Do a cycle count. Always um, do a cycle count of your um, inventory. Keep a good track. Um, I don't know how, we how you need to do it with your particular company, but always have a continuous inventory counting to reduce the manual process and time of cost of physical inventory counting. Um, um, ensure that the material handling and receiving process are efficient and well documented. Stock shortages can occur much more easily if inventory levels are not accurately counted. Always, always uh, critical components, please um, do keep a count of them. Be also do a cycle count on all your other products as well so that you're on, you don't face a shortage of your inventory. Very important. Always ask your warehouse to do a cycle count or a warehouse stock count and a lot of these warehouses that you have um, would be happy to do it or third party logistics companies would happy to do it for you. Um, companies should keep their plan for every part um, to uh, up to date. Uh, the PFEP connects all points of an organization to improve overall visibility of factory operations. Very important, identify your ABC analysis, identify your ABC products, um, categorize your products according to ABC. Keep up to date of your operations. The technique divides inventory into three groups, uh, following then focus on higher priority materials and products. Finally, buyers can modify their order policy to reflect the levels of demand that the company is expressing and forecasting. So very important, um, do have um, an ABC analysis of your products so that you identify which are your critical components and you don't run out of them. Uh, in conclusion, whatever prevention method is used, getting the right parts at the right time is critical to keeping products flowing throughout the factory and reaching customers on time. 
Um, check out our blog. Check out my blog on short age and versus stockouts. Um, you can find it in my um, YouTube channel. Um, understand difference to learn more about the causes, shortages, and stockouts. So there's a video about this um, shortage versus stockouts. Um, go have a look, and you get a better idea about you know uh, the shortage. Understanding the difference between the two. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. So if you did find this. Um, article this video interesting please do um, subscribe to the channel um, also share it if you can and hit the notification button for more future updates until then i'll see you next week cheers till then have a nice weekend